Hello everybody and welcome to Making Games with Ruby Episode 3 Basics. I'm Tyler and as always these videos are brought to you by manwithcode.com. So today in this episode we're going to be talking about the very basics of game creation. Just uh, getting a window up on the screen and handling some very basic events. Uh, if you would like to see the code uh, in its entirety and everything for you to look at at your own leisure. It's online at manwithcode.com slash 322 making games with Ruby EP3 basics. Uh, you can either type that in or the link will be in the video description if you're not on that page already. Alright, so let's get started. First thing we need to do is open up our favorite text editor. I'm going to be using gedit. We're going to save our file and let's see, I'll just call this uh, game.rb. Okay. And the first thing we need to do is uh, require the libraries that we need to use. So, in this case, it's Ruby Gems and Ruby Game. All right, and then we're going to create the skeleton for our main game class. So it's class game initialize def run def update and def draw. Okay, so those don't do anything yet, but they will. And let's see, we're going to create an instance of the game class g equals game.new and g.run, and that'll create our basic skeleton. And I'm going to run this just to make sure there are no syntax errors. I've opened up the command line already and read game.rb, and no errors. We're good. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the initialize function set up. So first we're going to create our screen variable, which is at screen Ruby game screen dot new screen size is going to be 640 pixels by 480. That's what that array is there. Um, zero is the screen color depth. Don't worry about that right now. Um, So, and then this part is the flags that we are passing to Ruby game. So, don't worry too much about the word flags. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out to you is that Ruby game HW surface. What this means is that when we create the screen, uh, the screen is a type of uh, object called a, sur called a surface. And HW surface means we want to accelerate the screen on the graphics card if it's available. Um, and double buffering is a way of drawing to the screen. That's what double buff means. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail right now about that until we get to drawing, and then I'll explain it to you. Um, but we need to set those up right now in the beginning. Okay. So, let's see, what else do we need to add? All right, we're going to set the screen title, which is at screen dot that title equals pong, because we're making pong. And see then we're gonna create this q equals ruby game event q dot new at clock equals ruby game clock dot new and oh, excuse the noise I'm sorry and at clock dot set or sorry dot Target frame rate equals 60. All right, so at Q is our event Q, and I'll be talking about that in a minute. At clock and at clock dot target frame rate is what we do to keep the frame rate down, and that doesn't tell you much. So what is the frame rate? The frame rate is the number of frames that the game draws per second. Now, why would you want to limit that? Well, it's because if you don't limit it, the game will run as fast as possible. And while you can compensate for that, and while that doesn't sound like a bad thing, if you think about it, it will run It's at a different speed on each computer, since not all computers are created equal. So you set this frame rate limit so it doesn't run too fast, and you can have a nice consistent speed across all computers. And 60 isn't some magical number, I just kind of picked it out of the air. And we can change it if we want, but I think it'll be a good number. All right, so now we're going to 
flesh out the run function. We're going to do loop do. Uh, call the update method, the draw method, and at clock dot tick. And at clock dot tick is the actual method that allows us to limit the frame rate. And what we're going to do is we're going to, from within update, we're going to be exiting from, from the program. So that's why loop dot, loop do has no condition to break the loop. All right. So now we can run the game. See, we have our nice little window here. So now we want to quit and close. But as you can see, I can click the X button. I can hit all F4 all I want, and it won't close. So you <laughs> And that's because we haven't added anything to handle the user requesting to close the window. So one of the things you can do is you can uh, go over to the command prompt and hit control C and that will kill the game. Don't worry about the error messages. Uh, or you may need to go into the task manager and kill it from there. Alright, so now we're going to have to fix this. So I told you about this event queue earlier. So we're going to start using it inside our update method. At QUE dot each do ev case ev so win ruby game quit event and sorry this is all going off screen because of the huge font size or going wrapping around I'm just kind of doing this in the hopes that you can see it we're going to exit so when we get the ruby game quit event we're going to exit so now we save that and run it and I did something wrong. Oh, I forgot to end the case statement, my bad. Okay. Run it, and there we go. Now we can hit the X button and it closes. We can hit Alt F4 and it closes, so no needing to do Control C or go to the task manager. So what is exactly the event queue? Whenever the user gives us some input, Ruby, Ruby game puts an event on the event queue. And when we loop over it, this allows us to handle these events and respond to them appropriately as we do here with the quit event all right so and that about wraps it up for today's episode i know pretty simple uh, i hope you enjoyed this episode i hope you've learned something if you have any questions comments or suggestions for this series please leave a comment on this page or email me at tyler at thank you very much for watching goodbye